OK, so scales are the next thing we really need to know. And this really will help with your knowledge of how these staffs work. It'd be good if you can do this at the same time as me and actually draw out a treble clef on one of the staff sheets you've got. Revise of how to draw the treble clef. If you've all got a sheet there, you want to start on the second line, curve up to the third line, up to the middle. So the little C there. Then back around, down to the bottom again. And then we want to go up, 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 twist around and come back down and create a hook. That gets you your treble clef. Now the scale that we're going to do today is what we call a C major scale. The C major scale starts on that middle C that we just talked about. The middle C is the one that's below these five lines. It's on this line down here. It's that line just below the five lines, that there being middle C. And I'm going to draw a C major scale, and I want you to do it along with me. So we're going to go up by note, and again, through the alphabet. So the next note is D, then E. F, G, A, just extend my lines here so we can all see what we're doing, B, and C. We get back to C again. A C major scale has eight notes in it, a one octave C major scale, goes C, D, E, F, G, a, B, C. And when we're in C major, you, it's called C major because of the, these notes in it and the fact that it starts on a C. And it's um, major because of the relationships that are between all of these notes. The relationships between notes is when I'm talking about the distance between one note and another. So th there's a difference, right, you can hear between singing C, D, and C, G. There's quite a remarkable difference there. Now, when you look at it on the sheet, you, it kind of looks like every note is going up equally, doesn't it? It kind of looks like every note just goes up by one. But unfortunately, music isn't that, isn't that pure, and there's a bit of um, distortion going on here. Some of the notes are a little wider than some of the other ones. And the distance between the notes is called an interval. So another, note, another term to learn, interval. You want to write it down too. So the interval describes the distance between two notes. So an example of an interval would be one that I talk about in choir all the time, a fifth. Another interval would be a third. Another interval would be a second. These are all intervals. When we count intervals, we actually count them, not the way that we count maths, um, but we start by calling the first note that we're going to start counting from as one, rather than a zero. We call that one, one. So if I was actually counting the interval between C and C, you would think that's zero. But the interval between a C and a C is what we call a one, or the actual word for it is a unison. They're united right, together as a one, as a unison. However, the interval between C and D is called a second. Because you're going to count C, D. Yeah, C, D. If we're going to go C to E, C, D, E. That's a third. That's a third. Right. So you always start with the note that you're counting, and you include the note that you finish on as well in that. So in a simplistic sense, we can say that the interval between each note in this scale is a second, because you can see that there's a second there, a second there, a second there, a second there, like so. But that doesn't fully describe the scale, because scales have little subtleties within them. And there's not just one kind of second. There are two kinds of seconds. And we're going to describe them in the simplest way possible by the smallest value of the distance. 
The smallest possible value you can get in music, if you're in the Western music tradition, is called a semitone. A semitone. Where, and semi meaning half implies that there must be something called a tone as well. And there is. A scale comprises here of only semitones and tones. That's all you're going to get. Semitones and tones are interesting because they're both actually types of seconds. They're both types of seconds. But the semitone is only half the value of a tone. It's only half the value of a tone. If you look on a piano, you've got white notes and black notes. And if I move up the piano, I go white, often go white, black, white, black, white, white, black, white. Usually there's, you're going between whites and blacks, but there might be some where there's just whites. Going like that is going by semitones because you're not missing any notes. You're doing every single note. But uh, black notes, um, there aren't any black notes in the C major scale. So as we're going up this scale, we're skipping all of those black notes entirely. So essentially, um, if you skip a black note, you have a tone. But if, you, if you're just going between one note to the next, it's just a semitone. This is best seen really on a piano keyboard, which I recommend everyone to have a look at or get an app for. Getting a piano app is probably the easiest way for you to start learning this. But I also have a sheet which I'll hand out in a moment which has a piano keyboard on it. So essentially, if I can get my piano app working, I've got a piano app here. And if, when I play the C major scale, I only play the white notes. You hear how different that sounds if I play all the black notes as well. Now on a piano keyboard, there are two spots where there are no black notes in between. The, to the two spots are between E and F and between B and C. I'll draw them in here. Between B and C and between E and F, there are no black notes in between them. So these are the two that are semitones. That's a semitone there, that's a semitone there. And every other one, C to D, D to E, F to G, G to A, A to B, are all tones. They're all tones. So they're a little wider than the semitones. Now if that's starting to look a bit complicated, we've got a way to memorize this. Um, who remembers how it goes? Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So T, T, S, T, 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 S. This is what we might call a formula in mathematics. It describes, that is basically the formula, the description for every major scale. This is the description of every major scale. Whether you start in C major, or you do D major, or you do G major, or a flat major, you always have the same thing where you're going tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And remember that these are intervals. So when I start counting my semitones, I don't go C is a tone. I go C to D is a tone. It's the, it's the relationship. So you go C to D, tone, D to E, tone, E to F, semitone, F to G, tone, and so on. Tone, 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 semitone. So that's what the C major scale looks like. And I broke it apart there, just so you understand that when we start singing, this is very important to know, that there are, these are not all the same. There are some that are a little bit, a little bit narrower than others. Okay, let's stop there with the C major scales.